Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll learn to become a better, more business-savvy designer so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I've got Paul Kulik as a guest to talk about tax write-offs that graphic designers need to know about. Stick around to see if you're forgetting any of them and find out about estimated taxes. Paul Kulik is the co-founder and CEO of Keeper, which helps freelance designers save money on taxes effortlessly. In his free time, Paul loves to train for marathons and spend time with his family in San Francisco. Welcome to the podcast, Paul. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks for having me, Colleen. I'm glad to be here. Sure. Well, as you know, taxes can be very complicated for freelancers, so I thought it'd be great to have you on here so you could help me break it down for them. Absolutely, yeah. That's true. Taxes are very complicated for freelancers, and it all stems from the fact that, you know, we may not think about ourselves that way, but as freelancers, we're considered small business owners by the IRS, you know, even if we're doing it part-time. And that comes with a few key complexities uh, that don't happen in W-2 work. The first one, of course, is that your taxes are not being withheld from your paychecks. This one, most people know, but sometimes you you know, you find someone who, who forgot about it and then you get hit with a big tax bill at the end of the year. Um, second thing is that there's a lot of expenses that you have as a, as a freelancer um, that are tax write-offs. And trying to remember them all at the end of the year when you're filing your taxes is very tricky. Uh, so it's important to track them throughout the year. Absolutely. So let's talk about some of these expenses. Yeah, um, the way the IRS defines... Uh, tax deductible expenses for for freelancers is that they have to be both ordinary and necessary for their line of work. And so while that's a nice broad statement, it actually doesn't give you a lot of context about what, you know, what actual things that you buy are going to be considered write-offs. And so one of the most common misconceptions is, you know, which expenses are included and which expenses are not. Um, so at Keeper, we spend a lot of time thinking about this, and we review the latest legislation and cases, uh, and we have a team of accountants that, uh, that you know, basically write these rules into our software. So we spend a lot of time thinking through this, uh, and we work with a lot of freelance designers uh, to a point where we have uh, you know, a good stance on what we believe are the definitive list of tax write-offs that these freelancers can, can claim. So some of the very obvious ones uh, are going to be software expenses that are just required to do the job, whether that's Photoshop or Adobe Creative Cloud or whatever other uh, you know, design software that's being used. That's obviously a requirement and an ordinary expense for a freelancer. Sure. So those are simple and those are typically uh, recurring and, and so they're easy to find at the end of the year. Where it's more of a gray area is, uh, is expenses that are both personal and work-related. Yes, for sure. And so some of the really common ones here are electronics. So for example, you might be uh, using your phone for work. In fact, it's unlikely that you aren't using your phone for work. So both your, your, the purchase of your phone and the, uh, the phone bill and all associated phone expenses are going to be partially tax deductible. Yeah, and even the taxes on the phone. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, another, another one that a lot of people forget about is when you go out with a, with a friend uh, for a meal. You know, people usually remember to claim, certainly when it's a client's meal, uh, but if you are discussing work and, uh, and your industry and you are, you are getting ideas from this person that you are grabbing a meal with, that is actually also, you know, a meal for work, as long as it's not extravagant, uh, which you know, the IRS defines as being over the top for clients' entertainment. Uh, meals for work are a partial tax write-off. Yeah, you're supposed to report, like, to your CPA or an accountant that you're using 100% of that cost, but you only get, like, 50% of the cost to write off. That's right. That's right. And, and all these tax write there's all these little rules that um, are associated with different types and categories of expenses and what percent of them you can write off. Um, and meals, you're right, meals are about 50%. And then the other category I wanted to mention was, uh, was actually working from home. 
so I think, especially for freelance designers, you know, it's it's uh, it's probably not worth getting your own office because a lot of the work you do is, uh, you know, is, is from a monitor at home. If you have a dedicated workstation in your home or apartment, uh, you can claim the home office expense. Uh, excuse me, the home office tax deduction, and. This one is commonly overlooked because people think that they need to have a separate room in their in their home in order to qualify for this. And the reality is, you know, not all of us live in homes and some of us are living in apartments. And that also, um, you know, even if you just have a desk with a with a monitor on it that you use uh, for work, you know, that is also a, you know, a home office. Yeah, I actually have a dedicated office space, but then I have I've actually used part of another room for storing all of the boxes of my portfolio work from over the past 20 some years. So I actually count that as part of it, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And and, and this is a very important uh, tax write off because, you know, living is expensive. Homes are expensive and, and you can actually claim a portion of all of your home related expenses, whether that's part of your rents or, you know, utilities, power, water, electricity, and especially your Wi-Fi bill. Uh, all of those are uh, partially tax deductible according to the percentage of your home that you use for work. Mm -hmm. And so that's a massive source of tax deductions right there. So that's the home office tax uh, deduction. And and one other thing I'll say about that is uh, sometimes people like to use the simplified method. There's basically two ways to claim the home office write-off. One is by taking a, a dollar amount for every square foot. And the other is to take a percentage of all these actual home-related expenses. I will mention that for most of our customers, we've noticed that it's much more profitable to claim the actual expense method here rather than the simplified per square footage method. And we, we write a big blog post about this, but, but in short, unless you're living in a, basically a townhouse in the countryside, uh, it's very unlikely that the simplified method will be better because it's, it's a rule that was written uh, you know, a while ago by the IRS and it really doesn't favor urban living and and folks who, you know, have have smaller homes or, or more expensive rental property. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Second category here uh, that I want to mention is actually transportation. A lot of us drive a car for work, and it's easy to forget to claim, you know, whether it's a gas fill-up or car maintenance or even the registration fees with the DMV. Uh, all of those things are also partially deductible. And, and, and as freelance designers, we probably don't drive as much as certain other types of contractors. But it's important to, to remember to claim this deduction because it's worth a lot of money. I, I will also mention that like the home office, car expenses, you can also claim as miles. That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a reasonable way to do it if you can build that habit around tracking miles. But like the home office expense, uh, we found that tracking actual car expenses is oftentimes more profitable than tracking miles. Really? It depends on, how, you know, of course, your, the, the type of car you have and how much you actually drive for work. The rule of thumb that we've defined is that if you drive less than 20,000 miles a year for work, then claiming the actual car expenses is going to be more profitable. So another little tidbit from, uh, from what we've learned at Keeper. I don't know about a lot of people, but I've never really used those booklets that come with the checkbooks, you know, to balance your checkbook. So I've saved them up over right, the years right. and I keep one in each of our cars. So then if I need to write off mileage, I just pull that booklet out and I just write down the mileage there. And then at the end of the year, you know, I'll go and sit down at my desk and I type them all in and, you know, add up what I need to. <laughs> right. No, and a lot of people do that. You know, it, it's if you've built a habit, then that's fantastic. Uh, what I've seen is especially true for people who are newer to the industry is that um, they're not used to having built those habits, you know? And, and, right. And, and for those folks, what we hate to see is when they just don't track anything at all and are leaving thousands of dollars on the table at, at tax time. Yeah, so true. I mean, I took a I, business trip to Miami and I drove for that. That was a lot of mileage. <laughs> so, so really, it's, it's all about, you know, tracking these expenses, however it works for you. Okay, what about business travel expenses? So, you know, if you leave town for work and the IRS has a, has a rule of thumb here, basically if it's more than 100 miles away as the crow flies, and, you know, for work could mean whether it's a client meeting or a conference, um, anything like that, uh, 
then all associated expenses are going to be tax write-offs as well. Unless it's for your full-time job and they're reimbursing you. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to be clear, uh, these are all, when I say for work, I mean uh, for your freelance design work. Uh, so so that, that's one of the perks of you know, being freelance is that you can write all these things off. As a W-2 employee, um, you, know, you can't. Uh, even if it's very unlikely that you'll have more of these expenses than the standard deduction as a W-2 employee. But as a 1099, as a freelancer, then all of this uh, is important to track, regardless of how much you make. So, so uh, with respect to travel, uh, you know, the transportation, planes, trains, and automobiles, the lodging, and then one that people often forget is uh, meals. So anytime that you're traveling, if you, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you go out to eat, uh, that is also going to be partially deductible because, you know, the idea is that it would be much cheaper for you to cook at home, but because you had to travel for work, uh, you had to pay this money. Right. Okay, great. There's also some small, well, seemingly small everyday expenses that I see that really add up, you know, at the end of the year, like supplies, for instance. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, freelance designers, especially a lot of the things you uh, you have in your office, um, you know, or your home office, such as notebooks and sketch pads, pens and pencils, all of those are, you know, all of those are work related supplies that are tax deductible, as well as things that are digital products like, um, you know, website hosting fees, um, stock photos, uh, all those things that, that, that sort of help you do your job. Um, throughout the year. Oh, yeah. Even domain names, plugins, themes. Yeah, they really add up throughout the year. Yeah, it's, it's always going to be, you know, a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there. But over, yeah, over, over the course of every month, uh, our typical user that, that, that uses Keepers save in about $173, you know, in savings, not, in, not just in tax write-offs, in savings at the end of every month. Oh, wow. That's great. So yeah, so that's that's a little rundown of the the tax write offs that are important to track throughout the year. Um, the, I think the key here that that I want to you know convey to your audience is that this stuff adds up and uh, and it's really hard to remember at the end of the year. So uh, we recommend tracking this throughout the year, uh, setting up a system, whether that's you know a spreadsheet or uh, like a, a log in your car as you have, Colleen. Um, to make sure that, you know, come tax time, you're not, it's not 11 p.m. on April 14th and you're, you know, you're, you're trying to put together your spreadsheets and, 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 and ultimately what happens is that people just overpay. And, and that's, you know, that's what we hate to see. Right. I mean, it takes a lot of time. I track all my stuff throughout the year, but it still takes me a good couple of weekends before tax time just to prepare everything for my CPA. Yeah, and, and that's not uncommon. Okay, great. So now that we've covered a lot of the tax write-offs that some freelancers might be forgetting about, let's switch gears and get into quarterly estimated taxes. So quarterly taxes, you know, I, I, I was freelancing as well, and I, I just remember hating <laughs> quarterly taxes. They are really tough. Yeah, well, I hate all taxes. True. But, you know, it feels like at the end of the year that you can go to TurboTax and, and, and it's a little bit easier. But Quarterly taxes are just, you either have to have a CPA who does them for you, or it's just this excruciating process where you have to, you know, go download the little calculation sheet from the IRS and essentially do your own taxes. And then you have to pay online and pay your state, pay your federal. Now, because of the fact that they're so complicated, uh, a lot of people don't do them. And unfortunately, there is a penalty. The penalty is about 9% of, of the amount that you underpaid, essentially, that you haven't paid during each quarter, which adds up, you know, which is, so if, if, if you owe like five, $6,000, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's 500 bucks uh, of penalty that you're paying in a year. Yeah. And it, that's a lot, you know, it's, it's not nothing. And so, um, and so what we recommend is that people, uh, even if even if they don't have an accountant, uh, is that people you know do file and, and make a payment for quarterly taxes. And we one thing we've tried to do at Keeper is we try to make it really easy. So we've built this free tax calculator um, that'll that'll basically tell you exactly how much you need to pay both your federal and your state. And it's available online even if you can't you know if you don't have a CPA or don't want to pay for one. 
So, Paul, your app called Keeper helps freelance designers actually keep track of all of this. And I actually tried this out and I thought it was really cool because, you know, it wasn't all just automated. It w- There was a human component to it with someone actually sending me a text to say, hey, is this a business expense? And I mean, I've been doing this a long time, so I know what my business expenses are and they're on a separate card. But, you know, trying this out, I found that this could be really helpful to somebody that doesn't already have these habits, like you said, of knowing what you can and cannot write off. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I think you you hit it right on the head. You know, w- with Keeper, we're trying to build a tool for folks who are new to freelancing. Um, and what it does is essentially, you know, it couldn't be simpler. You link a bank or credit card account and Keeper monitors purchases that you make. And every time you buy something that might be a tax write-off, we'll actually send you a text message, uh, a simple yes or no question. Uh, and then if, if you tell us that, yes, you know, this software or this, uh, you know, this supplies purchase was work-related, we'll go ahead and add that to your tax file. We'll categorize it for you and we'll help you file at the end of the year. So it's really designed to make it dead simple for people who are new to freelancing, new to what taxes, you know, what, what tax implications there are to freelancing uh, and to make it really, really simple. Cool. And now, since my audience is all over the globe and not just in the United States, I want to make a disclaimer, and that is just, you know, be sure to check with your accountant in your jurisdiction to see if any of these write-offs and any of these other tax things that we've talked about apply in your situation. That's right, yeah. And and, uh, disclaimer on our end, so we we are a U.S. uh, tax-based product. All of our recommendations are for the U.S. tax code and not international. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on the podcast, Paul. It's been very helpful. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks so much, Colleen. It's a pleasure. If you found this helpful, please leave a review and like and share it on social media. Join the Design Domination community on Facebook and go to creative-boost.com to download free resources and apply for design coaching. 